Hey, this is Birgit Haugen with Superscum.com and we are here in the Black Sheep in Colorado Springs with Mercedes Lander, drummer extraordinaire of the all-female band Kitty. Yeah. How's it going? I am awesome. It's very strange getting interviewed by you, I'm yeah. not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been only knowing each other for long ever. Long, yeah, long uh, time, long, long time. time. Okay, um, let's talk about the new album, I Failed You, has been out now since the end of August. Yep. Have you heard any sales? How is it going? It's great, honestly. Like this album, apparently, it, it's doing very well, and um, the fan reaction from it has been great. Like it's people are calling it our best record to date, and so I'm pleased. I'm pleased with it more or less. So on the uh, on the side that I know, like I made a good record. So so definitely very exciting. And uh, with this record, you also were more involved with the lyrical content of it, correct? I usually am. Like, I mean, since I've been writing lyrics for this band um, since Funeral, uh, since we put Funeral out. So, I mean, this album actually has the least amount of songs that I've written lyrics for since Funeral. Oops. So that's, a, <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry about it. But you wrote uh, We Are The Lambs? Yes, I did. I wrote We Are The Lamb, and um, that was... Um, That was definitely uh, that was definitely something I personally had to get off my chest. So, and uh, music-wise though too, um, we are the lamb. Is uh, I don't know. It's heavier, but it's melodic at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like uh, we've always kind of prided ourselves on being that band that um, kind of can be a heavy band but also be very melodic at the same time. And I think that has a lot to do with. Um, you know, the way we structure our songs and the way, you know, the way I play with the songs. Like, I mean, um, I'm not, I'm not the type of drummer who's going to sit there and, you know, like play a million beats per minute just because I can. Like, I, that's just not something I'm more of like, you know, what, whatever lends to the song, what is ever going to, what's going to sound good with the song. You know what I mean? Like, because more or less I'm, I'm more of a songwriter than I am like, you know, like, I'm not an awesome drummer by any means, but like I think I am a way better songwriter than I am a musician. So, cool. This was also the second album, or um, two and a half albums, that you went with uh, Sigrid Meyer. Yeah. Uh, what does he bring to the table that just works for you guys? Um, Sig um, is a great dude. We've been friends for a really, really, really long time, and on top of that, he's very easy to work with. And he is like the first person that I've really, that we've really met as a band that has actually like got it, you know what I mean? He actually gets it. He, he understands that, you know, um, the, what this band is supposed to sound like on a, re on a recording. He understands um, that we're really open to trying new things, but you know, we kind of have to keep that kind of kitty sound, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it's just because we have such a personal relationship with him that he just like, he understands us. It's really cool. And uh, speaking of writing, do you guys write on the road since you guys are touring maniacs? Or, or do you already have something before you go into the studio or do you do it all in the studio? Um, we usually, uh, if we're going to write anything on the road, it's usually like if we have like a little time to like jam for sound check or whatever. Um, we'll like jam out some new riffs or whatever, but we usually just write everything at home, man. Like we go into my mom's basement and we like we wrote this record in like a little a little less than three months, and um, and it was uh, we just went in the basement and just like everything just started pouring out, man. It was really cool. And how long did you spend time in the studio? It was about uh, I failed. It was uh, about three weeks we took to record it. Now. I know that Ivy had immigration for Ivy got married to an American, yeah. so she had immigration problems coming back into Canada. Yeah. Was she part of the writing or recording process? How did that work? Basically what happened was um, uh, because she couldn't get back into Canada until all of her paperwork was done, um, which we just finally got finished up on this on this tour. Um, she finally got her, her residency. Um, We basically, what happened was, 
um, Morgan Tara and I wrote wrote the album and um, we were sending her demos and stuff like that so she could write her bass parts or whatever and then Siegfried drove from Goderich where he lives to Indiana to where Ivy it lives and recorded her bass parts well, cool. So, I mean, like, Sig's the kind of guy that he's just like, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this record the best record it could be. And it was really cool. It was definitely really cool. cool. Now, uh, when you guys record, do you guys have, like, stuff left over that is maybe going to be used for the next album? We don't, uh, we don't, we don't usually do that. Like, if we're usually, we're the kind of band that's just like, okay, well, we're going to write 11 songs and that's all we're going to write and that's all we're going to do. Fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I failed you is also um, on a personal level really personal mm -hmm. to Morgan yeah. um, how was it the first couple times when she sang some of the songs live is that weird for her did she mention something or I think in a live setting it's a little different um, but I, I, I feel like for her situation like in like writing the album about what it's about I think she really it's more of a therapeutic thing I don't think she said it was weird or anything like that but it's more of a therapeutic thing um, also though <laughs> um, we're used to road testing all of our music um, and, like touring far in advance well before we've even recorded records and playing new songs you know what I mean we didn't get to do that on this tour or on this on this album cycle so we this, this is the first time that we've never like road tested songs or whatever and I think you know what I mean I think it, it definitely it worked very well. Uh, videos, you guys did a couple of videos already. As a matter of fact, you shot both videos in the same day. Yeah. Uh, was that a first thing for you guys, or did you do that before? We've never shot in two videos in in the same day. Um, it was a really, really, really long day, but very productive, obviously, because we got everything done. I mean, um, the Empire's Part Two video was. Uh, It was really super quick. I mean, like yeah. we ran through the song like maybe like eight times, and and then the We Are the Lamb video took forever. So it's just one of those things where it's, you know what I mean? It, it, it was it was it was good time management. Thank you, Dave Brodsky. <laughs> Actually, when I watched the We Are the Lambs video. Um, Maris the Great came to mind. <laughs> I can't remember what year that was, but would you enlighten our audience? Um, yeah, Maris the Great actually killed us. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, I am a huge fan of like blood, guts, and gore. So um, yeah, no, when he when he killed us, yeah, yeah, that, that was great. But um, the We Are the Lamb video is like kind of along the same the same lines. Uh, it. Um, It's kind of supposed to be kind of like a like a 70s like um, zombie movie like like a like a Lucio Fucci movie or like a Dario Argento movie, um, you know what I mean? Like really super creepy, like kind of like has an eight millimeter feel to it, and it's just really the the guy that did the makeup for the video, his like literally that we shot it in his house, and it literally like his house looks like that all the time. There's like bo there's body parts Is he everywhere. Married? No. Yeah, his, there's like body parts everywhere. There's just like just like uh, and also um we were i was having a conversation with the with the makeup guy and he, i was like oh man i was totally kidding around i was like dude do you have like a severed penis anywhere and he was like yeah totally <laughs> he's like i've got a severed penis right here and he like goes and finds it for me so in the beginning of the video when morgan's it has her like pot of like body parts there's oh. actually a severed dick in there Like a, like a faked severed penis. Does it show in the video? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. So uh, so everybody, please check out the video and, yeah. you know, let Kitty know if it shows or not. I know you you would notice that, everyone. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, 15 years in existence, mm -hmm. by the way. And, um, I mean, I can say that anytime I mention, oh, it's an all-female metal band. And, uh, oh, Kitty. Yeah. I mean, word comes, I mean, wow, you know, I think besides heart, yeah, you guys are the most famous all-female metal band. And after 15 years in existence, what kind of changes have you seen in the metal scene? Um, well, speaking of the female thing, I think it's a lot more accepted now than when we first started. Um, other than that, I mean, like, I don't know, metal is kind of, it goes through its trends and it goes through, like... I don't know. I kind of feel like there's there's like about to be like a huge like move, and I, I don't know where it's gonna go. But back I'm to grunge. Oh God, no! I hope <laughs> not. Uh, I just really, I really hope that you know, like some good 
good real metal comes out in the next little while because like I'm super bummed on deathcore. <laughs> Who wants that shit? You don't listen to metal anymore. Period. I heard right. Um, I listen to uh, like older stuff. Like I'll pop in. I'll pop in. You know, uh, you know, an old Metallica record or like an old Anthrax record. I'll pop in. Like you know, uh, actually uh, uh, funny. Uh, old destruction. <laughs> <laughs> actually, funny story. Um, I actually was was uh, I I used to own like the entirety of like. I used to own a lot of metal records and I ended up getting robbed. My car got robbed like a few years ago and uh, I lost everything. So I've been like slowly like picking, picking up heart work again, picking up, you know, like domination and just like, you know what I mean? Just like, just like small little things. So I actually, I got a couple records today and like, and uh, I'm very excited to nice. go back and be nostalgic. <laughs> Here you go. I'm um, circling around. Uh, we're touring real quick. This is your first headlining tour, of course, you know, since the album came out. I yeah. think you started before the album came out, right? Did, yeah. Um, how has the tour been going? How is the response? Awesome, awesome, awesome. We've been having a lot of fun. Um, just Dirge and Diamond Plate are really awesome dudes. Um, we've been having so much fun with them. And um, on top of that, like, the crowds have been really great. Everybody seems to really like the new stuff. And, I mean, we're playing older stuff and newer stuff. So, you know, the, the mix is good, and the crowds seem to be really excited. Uh, I have seen you, I mean, I don't even know how many times over the years, and I've seen you headlining, and I've also seen you supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the pros and cons of being the headliner to be being the support band for a uh, big huge name band well like uh, headlining i mean like it's it's you get to play longer which not necessarily it's not necessarily a good thing because like you know it's a lot of fun just to like go play a half an hour set just shit all over everyone and uh, all over everyone and just leave you know yeah. what i mean um i mean like headlining you're not making any new fans supporting you get to play to a, a whole entire different audience that people may or may not know who you are you know what i mean so that's why the i really do enjoy support uh, supporting quite a bit because it's there's a lot less work involved you know what i mean yeah. you get to basically you set your drum kit up you go play a half hour set you go drink a fucking couple beers <laughs> and you know and then you go fucking and you've made some new fans in the process yeah. you know what i mean well, uh speaking of new fans and you know that it's gonna come um when you guys supported icp last year mm -hmm. i mean i thought it was an awesome move because i mean honestly a lot of juggalos know who kitty is yeah. and are you guys killed on that tour we certainly did we certainly did it was awesome did you got and then you played the gathering this year yeah. did you guys um gain new fans or fans in that genre now that For you sure. like everyone's uh, like i i feel like uh like at least there's like at least a couple juggalos, juggalos that show up to like every show and <laughs> sometimes they'll like face paint it up and shit too which is really cool but like yeah no they come out to the shows and like we i mean like i think there are definitely like a lot of closet juggalos around too yeah. and they um are they they they've always come to our shows or whatever and like there was a lot of people that i didn't know that were into icp that were like oh my god you're you're touring with them now that's so amazing like people got really super stoked about it and on top of that man that tour was like it easy was it was easy yeah. and fun and we got taken care of and all the fans just f loved it yeah. so yeah true um what has been your best tour in your career other than ausfest oh god um Europe, 2000, uh, January of 2010, we uh, went uh, with it uh, over there, uh, It Dies Today, and Malphite toured with us. Uh, most fun tour we've ever done in our lives, like hands down. Those are my two best friend bands. Love those guys so much. Cool. What's next for Kitty after this run? Um. There's a couple things that are in the mix right now we can't really talk Which about. Which she's going to tell me off camera. Off camera right <laughs> but um, they haven't been announced yet. So, But other than that, uh, hopefully lots of touring and, uh, you know, in the new year and just uh, work on I Failed You, you know what I mean? Cool. Alrighty, well, thank you. Oh, why, thank you, Birgit. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> good